Welcome to PharmaGuru to channel. Today we will discuss the basic guide to dissolution testing of pharmaceutical products. Dissolution is a physical test to characterize how a drug is released from a dosage form. We employ analytical measurements and a clock to determine rates of release. Traditionally used to measure the release rate of drugs from tablet and capsule formulations, it is now an essential tool for assessing the performance of products for all routes of administration including patches and semi-solids such as ointments and creams for transdermal application, suppositories, pessaries, buccal tablets, chewing gums, suspensions, implants for subcutaneous or intramuscular release, and surgical products such as bone cement and drug eluting stents for repairing damaged blood vessels. Now moves to the history of dissolution tests. In the year 1897, Noyes and Whitney conducted the first dissolution tests. And gives an equation as you can see here, later E. Brunner and S. Kuting in 1900 proposed another equation. The first official disintegration test for tablets was published in Pharmacopoeia Helvetica in 1934, which used water at 37 degrees Celsius as the medium and periodical shaking. Between 1950 to 1980, many developments took place which established a relationship between dissolution and bioavailability. USP introduced dissolution testing in the 14th edition, 1950. Bioequivalents of supposedly similar products, different sources of some products often resulted in different in vivo responses and a simple comparative test that could be carried out in the laboratory was needed to investigate some of the possible reasons for these differences. Secondly, an in vitro means of assessing dissolution rates of emerging modified release formulations was required. Regulatory requirement, all pharmaceutical products delivering drug substances and its prime function is as an in vitro control of bioequivalence. It is necessary to demonstrate bioequivalence between products from different manufacturers, for example branded versus generic, different formulations, multiple sources of raw materials, varying manufacturing processes or sites of manufacture or simply batch-to-batch -batch variation. The most important purpose of dissolution testing is to ensure that the patient receives a reliable and consistent product. Now we will discuss types of USP dissolution apparatus, so first is the basket stirred flask test, USP apparatus 1, was adopted by USP in 1970. You can see the picture of this apparatus assembly and its elements. Now move to the next apparatus. Its name is Paddle Method, USP Apparatus 2, was adopted by USP in 1978. You can see the picture of this apparatus assembly and its elements. The next apparatus is Reciprocating Cylinder, USP Apparatus 3, was adopted by USP in 1991 for extended release products. Flow Through Cell, USP Apparatus 4, was adopted by USP in 1995 for extended release products. The next one is Paddle Over the Disc, USP Apparatus 5, for transdermal delivery products. The next apparatus is a rotating cylinder, USP Apparatus 6, for transdermal delivery products and reciprocating holder, USP Apparatus 7, for transdermal delivery products. And at last, we do the factors affecting the rate of dissolution. So let's move on. The degree of agitation. Higher stirring rate results in a higher dissolution rate. The surface area exposed in the solvent. Smaller the particle size, meaning the smaller the particle, the higher the total exposed surface, higher the dissolution rate. Thanks for watching.